Welcome to N4 Electrotechnics and in this lesson we'll be looking at the principles of electricity. Now in this diagram of an atom we find that protons have a positive charge, neutrons have no charge, electrons have a negative charge, and valence electrons are found in the outermost orbit of an atom. We find that like charges repel each other and opposite charges attract. A conductor is a material which allows the flow of current, such as copper. An insulator prevents the flow of current, such as glass or porcelain. Conventional current flow is from positive to negative. Electron current flow is from negative to positive. Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current. And the difference in potential between point A and point B is known as potential difference. Potential difference is measured when there is a load connected to a closed circuit. Here we have a battery with an internal resistance. Our E represents the generated EMF. A and B are the terminal points of the battery. R is the external load resistor. I is the current flow in the circuit. V is the potential difference across the load. And small letter R represents the internal resistance of the cell. Now, in order to do the calculations that are coming up, we need to know Ohm's law, which states that current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance, provided temperature remains constant. Therefore, using Ohm's law, V is equal to I times R, I is equal to V over R, and R is equal to V over I. Kirchhoff's current law states that the current flowing into the junction is equal to the current flowing out of the junction. Therefore, I is equal to I1 plus I2. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the voltage applied to a closed circuit is equal to the sum of the volt drops in that circuit. So here in this illustration, we have an applied voltage of 30 volts, which is equal to the sum of the volt drops across each resistor. Therefore, the applied voltage minus the sum of the volt drops is equal to zero. If we take a look at these three resistors in series and the volt drop across each resistor, now we say using Kirchhoff's voltage law, the applied voltage minus the sum of the volt drops. Here we have an applied voltage of six volts minus the volt drops of two, one, and three must be equal to zero. This brings us to our first example of Kirchhoff's law, looking at the value of the current in the circuit. The unknown values is I1, I2, and I1 minus I2. We'll take a look at loop A, B, E, F, and A first. Here we have a generator with an EMF of 15 volts and an internal resistance of 1 ohm, supplying voltage to two batteries. The first battery has an EMF of 12 volts, and an internal resistance of 0, 0,2. The second battery has an EMF of 9 volts and an internal resistance of 0, 0,2 ohms. Now, the applied voltage minus the sum of the volt drops is equal to 0. The applied voltage is the generated EMF of the generator minus the EMF of the battery. Subtract the volt drops. How do we calculate the volt drops? Well, across the generator, it's going to be R1 multiplied by I1. The volt drop across the battery will be R2 multiplied by I1 minus I2. Now to multiply the factors inside of the bracket, we have R2 multiplied by I1 and R2 multiplied by I2. A positive multiplied by a negative will give us a negative. Therefore, the applied voltage is 15 minus 12 subtract the sum of the volt drops. The value of R1 is 1 ohm and the value of R2 is 0, 0,2 ohms. Now if we notice we've got a 1 I1 and 0, 0,2 I1, therefore we can add them together. So inside of the bracket we've got 1, 0,2 I1 minus 0, 0,2 I2. Now looking at the signs, we've got a negative sign outside of the bracket, multiplied by a positive sign, will give us a negative. However, a negative multiplied by a negative will give us a positive. So therefore, the answer for equation 1 is 3 minus 1, 0,2 I1 plus 0, 0,2 I2. Right, let's take a look at the second part of the circuit looking at loop 
B, C, D, E, B, which means we're going to ignore the first battery. This, the applied voltage minus the sum of the volt drops is equal to zero. Therefore, the applied voltage is E1 minus E3. Subtract the sum of the volt drops. The volt drop across the generator is R1 times I1. And the volt drop across the second battery will be R3 multiplied by I2. The value of R1 is 1 ohm and the value of R3 is 0, 0,2 ohms. Now, if you look at the sign outside of the bracket, it's a minus. Now, a minus multiplied by a positive will give us a negative. Therefore, our second equation is 6 minus 1 times I1 minus 0, 0,2 times I2. Right, in the third step, we now add equation 1 and equation 2. Now, we don't have to multiply anything out, and we can start by eliminating I2. So if you take a look over here, a positive plus a negative, 0, 0,2, will cancel each other out. 3 plus 6 will give us 9. And minus 1, 2 plus minus 1 will give us minus 2, 2. Now, if we take the negative 2, 2 I1 across, it will become a positive so therefore i1 is going to be equal to 4,091 amps now we substitute i1 into equation 1 and you'll notice that we have 3 minus 1 comma 2 multiplied by i1 which is 4,091 plus 0, 0,2 i2 now to calculate i2 i'm going to take it across which means it'll become a negative. So therefore, I2 is equal to 9,546 amps. And the last current we need to calculate is I1 minus I2, and that gives us negative 5,455 amps. So taking a look at the circuit diagram, we have, uh, we've calculated I1, we've calculated I2, and we've calculated I1 minus I2. Right, let's look at some definitions. The definition of power is the rate at which work is done. Energy is the ability to do work. Joule's law states that the heat produced is directly proportional to the square of the current, the resistance, and the time that current is flowing. Efficiency is the, is the ratio of output over input. For resistivity, it is the resisting power of a specified material. So let's look at the function of each component in this formula. R is the resistance in ohms, the resistivity of the material in ohm meters, and the length of the conductor in meters, and the cross-sectional area in meters square. Our next example is to calculate the resistance of copper. We've been given a length of one kilometer of copper conductor, which means it is a thousand meters. The cross-sectional area of the copper cable is uh, 10 times 10 to the minus 6 meters square. And the resistivity is 0, 0,0173 times 10 to the minus 6. If we substitute those values, we get a resistance of 1,73 ohms. Positive temperature coefficient means that the resistance of the conductor increases as temperature increases. Negative temperature coefficient, such as an insulator, like rubber, resistance of insulators decrease as temperature rises. Temperature coefficient of resistance at 0 degrees Celsius is the increase in resistance of 1 ohm when temperature is raised by 1 degrees. Therefore, a positive temperature coefficient of resistance refers to materials whose resistance rises when temperature increases. Negative temperature coefficient of resistance refers to materials whose resistance falls when temperature increases. Right, to calculate the temperature coefficient of resistance, looking at this formula, the formula to calculate the final resistance of a material after a rise in temperature of zero degrees Celsius. Now, if we take a note here, this symbol is a Greek letter alpha, which is the temperature coefficient of resistance. 
Let's break this formula down. RT is the final resistance in ohms. RO is the initial resistance at 0 degrees Celsius. And we have the temperature coefficient at 0 degrees Celsius. And big letter T represents the final temperature in degrees Celsius. Therefore, to calculate the resistance of a coil using this formula, we have an original resistance of 50 ohms, a temperature coefficient of 4,3 times 10 to the minus 3, and a final temperature of 60 degrees. If we substitute all these values in, we get a resistance total of 62,9 ohms. To calculate the temperature of the coils, when the temperature coefficient is not given at 0 degrees Celsius, the formula below is used. So let's say we have an initial temperature of 25 degrees. Final temperature is unknown. Initial resistance is 100 ohms. Final resistance is 150 ohms. And the temperature coefficient at 25 degrees is 0, 0,004. Let's plot all these values and substitute them into the equation. So if you notice here, we have 150 for the total resistance. The original resistance is 100 ohms. We can take the 100 across to divide. Therefore, it's going to be 150 divided by 100. Then once we've got that answer of 1,5, you'll notice inside of the bracket, we have 1 plus the temperature coefficient. If we take the 1 across, it'll become 1,5 minus 1, and that will give us 0, 0,5. 0, 0,5 divided by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,004 plus the 25, if we take it across, will give us a final temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, for the very last question in this uh, module, the field coil of a motor has a resistance of 300 ohms at 75 degrees Celsius. Calculate the final resistance if the temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. Take the temperature coefficient as 0, 0,004 at 75 degrees Celsius. So here yeah, we plot all the information. This is the formula we're going to use. And we substitute all the values in. 300 for the original resistance. 1 plus the temperature coefficient of 0, 0,004. And 200 minus 75 degrees. Therefore, we're going to end up with a total resistance of 450 ohms. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to, uh, to hit that subscribe button to like and share these videos. Thank you very much.